everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And continuing on with my Navy theme month, I have the iconic G.I. Joe Sailor, the 1985 Shipwreck. Now, oddly enough, Shipwreck makes his first appearance in the 1984 five-part miniseries cartoon, The Revenge of Cobra, in the second part. It isn't until uh, a year later that we get the toy on the shelves. He makes his first appearance in the comic book in issue 40, where he's actually in command of the transportable tactical battle platform, and it seems like he's pretty much one of the Joes from the get-go. However, in the cartoon, he starts off as a bit of a mercenary who just happens to help out the G.I. Joes and just happens to tag along with them. Later on in the series, he's treated as one of the Joes with no questions asked. Shipwreck comes with an animal companion, a parrot. And we all know the parrot by the name of Polly. Now, I will refer to Polly as a he sometimes. I'm just used to that because in the cartoon, where the parrot is actually first named, the parrot is voiced by Frank Welker. So, despite the name Polly, I'm just going to assume that it's a male. Why not? Now, the thing is, is that Polly the Parrot makes his first appearance not with Shipwreck in 1984, but actually in 1985 with the five-part season opener, uh, The Pyramids of Darkness, in the very first part. In the Marvel comic book run, he never makes an appearance with Shipwreck. In fact, his first appearance in comic book form was in 1986 with G.I. Joe Special Missions issue number one. Shipwreck comes sculpted in a, what I'd like to call a World War II style work uniform, as he has his wide bottom pants, dungarees, a utility shirt, and his white Dixie Cup style cap. And because he has a uh, Chief Petty Officer's rank on his shoulder, uh, I'm going to assume that it's an older style uniform because that's not generally what uh, someone of a rank that high would wear. I'm just going to remove the parrot for a second and talk about the accessories. Shipwreck comes with a percussion pistol. That's a really nice little lanyard on the bottom. It's a very rubbery plastic and can be a little bit difficult to get into the hand at times. I'm not sure what the advantage would be of a percussion pistol with its flintlock technology and um, black powder ammunition. Um, it is possible that either there is an advantage in maybe salty air and high winds that a sailor would find himself in, or it's just an affectation that makes him feel more like a pirate. And Shipwreck also comes with a 3 8 inch rope line. As you can see, the, the line itself is rather long and a very usable length for playing with attached boarding hooks. And these boarding hooks really remind me of the type of hooks that um, actually would would be a two-piece part and upon impact on let's say a railing they would then spring outwards like a fan this already being in the fan position unfortunately this is actually just molded as one one piece and not listed on the uh, contents list is of course the grip on the other end of the rope line making it very easy for the figure to carry now, Shipwreck also has a molded hook on the side of his uh, hip there, which, as you can see, made it very easy for me just to uh, store his pistol. But it's also quite nice to put the rope line on when you're not using it, so his hands are free to hold the pistol. Now, Polly the Parrot is a really well-sculpted bird. Uh, I'm assuming that it's 
based on a perhaps a yellow Amazon parrot. Sorry, yellow headed Amazon parrot. Unfortunately, one major knock against this um, animal companion is the fact that it is sculpted at rest. Uh, it would have been really nice if the wings were extended for flight, like almost all other birds in the G.I. Joe line, like Spirit's Eagle Freedom. And just like that other bird, Polly's feet form a, a sort of a clip, which go on really easily onto Shipwreck's wrist. I would have liked to have put it on his shoulder instead, because, I mean, a bird at rest should really be on a, uh, on a shoulder. Again, perhaps uh, adding to more of the pirate mystique that maybe someone was going for. Unfortunately, just like uh, Freedom the Eagle, the feet are a separate piece, mold, uh, not completely molded onto the body, so this would be a very easy thing to crack off. So if you're looking for one on the aftermarket, make sure it still has the feet. Shipwreck is such a well done representation of the sailor, it really makes you want to army build him. In other words, make a whole squad of blue shirts, or a squad of sailors I should say, to man the tactical battle platform, or put a few on the devil fish, or fully crew a USS flag if you have one. Unfortunately, because his Dixie Cup cap isn't removable, it's a little hard to customize the figure into really individual characters. Unfortunately, you would have to wait until 1990 for the release of Topside, another General Sailor figure. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Thank you for watching my video, and stay tuned for next week to see another 1980s G.I. Joe toy review. See you then!